migrating certificate services from server 2008 to server 2019. Here's my source CA server, as you can see, it's Windows Server 2008 R2. The first thing I'm going to do is take a backup of my CA. It will launch a wizard. I'm going to tick both options and then select where I'm going to place my backup. And this server is also a CRL server and the CRL distribution point is on the root of the C drive. So I'm going to use that folder to also hold my backups. Click next and supply a password that you will need when you import the PFX certificate on the target server. Click next and click finish and that will take a backup of your CA server and its database. Now to get the rest of its settings if you run regedit and then navigate to HK local machine system current control set services now certificate services is cert SRV so if we scroll down to the C's sorry SVC expand that then expand configuration you will find a sub key that is the same name as your source server. We're going to take a backup of that entire key by right clicking and selecting export and I'm going to save that export in the same folder that I put my backup into so everything's in the same place. That's just done in there we've now got a backup of everything you can see CRL files in there because as the name of the folder implies it's also the CRL distribution point. So now we're simply going to remove the certificate services role from this machine. Untick Active Directory Certificate Services, pay heed to the warnings and click remove. Obviously, for the sake of the video, I've, uh, I've sped this up somewhat. But when it is complete, it will ask us to reboot the source server, which it is doing. Simply let it reboot, and then we're going to jump on over to our target 2019 server. Just to prove it's not smoke and mirrors, we'll go on Windows Server 2019. And on here, we're going to install the certificate service rule. Now, I've tried to make this worst case scenario. Like I said, that the source one was hosting CRLs and it's also an OCSP server. So, I've thrown as many spanners in the works as I possibly can to make it difficult. Add in the certificate services role. Next, and for role services, I'm going to select certificate authority web enrollment, and I'm also going to make it an online responder because that's two things that the source server had. And let it install. Now while that's installing, what I'm going to do is jump up on the network and I'm going to copy the folder that we put our backup on, on the Source 2008 CA server, across onto this server. So I'll just copy that, drop it on the root of the C drive here. And that's us installed. Click close and then carry out the configure active directory certificate services. I'm going to carry this out whilst logged in as a domain administrator. That's fine. Click next. Uh, and I'm going to configure all the role services at once because there's only actually the certificate 
authority that we're going to do anything with. Click next. It's an enterprise seer. It's a root seer. And I am going to use an existing private key. And I'm going to select the certificates and use the associated private key, which we made a backup of earlier on. Click next. And then I am going to import from my backup, which remember I copied to the root of my C drive. There it is there. And there's my PFX file. Type in the password that I set on the source server for my PFX file. Click OK. Uh, this sometimes trip you up. You've actually got to select it before it will let you click next. Otherwise you'll sit there for 10 minutes trying to work out why you can't click next. Click next again and click configure. Configuration succeeded. Click close. Now I'm manually going to stop certificate services. So that I can import my backup and my registry key while the services are stopped. So I navigate to the folder that just took a note of what the host name is here and the destination is 2019 CA. The reason why I'm pointing that out is because within here, obviously this one has the name of the old one. We just need to make a subtle change CA server name and I need to change that so it's the name of the new server 2019 CA as opposed to 2008 CA. The CA name will remain the same, it, it will still be whatever it was on the source one which was 2008 CA confusingly but yes we would like to save the changes. As far as your clients are concerned when we are finished it will be the same CA. Yes, merge that into the registry and that's just done in there. Just a bit of a tidy up. Launch the certificate authority management tool now remember we stopped, that's the reason why it's got a little stop symbol on, so all tasks restore so you tick both options and browse to the folder that you put the backup in. Sometimes people will mistakenly browse to the database folder and then it won't work, so it's got to be the, the parent folder. Supply your password that you stored for your PFX Click next, click finish and it will ask you to start certificate services. Let it do so. So now you will see, I only had a couple of issued ones on the source one but um, that lets you know that the database is in fine and everything is working. So let's fix our let's fix our CRL. Now I'm going to whiz through this. If you want to know how to set up a CRL, I've got a separate article on my website how to set all this up. So I'm very quickly just running through what needs to be done to set up a CRL. Setting the correct permissions on the folder for the CA server itself. And the correct NTFS permissions so that the CA server has rights to create CRLs and Delta CRLs in that folder. You'll know if you've got this wrong because eventually when we go to publish the CRL you get the red error and then you Google it and hopefully you get the fix on my website. So, we also need to set up our CRL in IIS. Again, I'm going to whiz through this very quickly. 
I've explained how to set all this up in previous articles on my website. I'm going to enable directory browsing. And then I'm going to create a virtual directory for my CRL. Make sure it's got the same alias as the source one. Otherwise your URLs won't work anymore. And the bit that everybody forgets, go to configuration editor, uh, system web server, security, request filtering, and make sure allow double escaping is set to true, which it is. On some of the older versions of IIS, it will not be. Okay, so as you can see, I have my CRL there, so I need to make sure that that URL works, and then I've got UNC path 1 here, which has obviously changed. So I'm going to need to add the same UNC path 1 in, but on this local server. Like I said, I've covered all this in, in other articles, so... If you just do a search on PNET Live, you'll find how to set all this up properly. Uh, Delta CRL allowed. And the bit that everybody forgets, put dot .crl on the end of it. Click OK. And you want to be able to publish CRLs and Delta CRLs to that location. Yeah. And then I'm simply going to remove the 2008 one, and it'll ask me to restart the service again, probably. Yeah. Now, remember, my other CRL is the web one that's getting stamped onto certificate, so I'll need to fix that at the end. So, let's just do a quick publish of my CRL. I didn't get any error messages, so that's very promising. And in there, we've now got a CRL published. Now, admittedly, there was one in there originally, but if you look at the timestamp, You'll see that one's only just been published, so we know that it's worked correctly. So that's our CA set back up again. The only thing to fix now is we need to... go back into... Certificate Authority, and we're going to fix the OCSP template. Well, let's say fix it. We're going to add in the uh, new server onto the security tab so that it can enroll and read the certificate template so that it can get its own OCSP. Like CRLs, I've covered OCSP on the, on the website. I've got articles on how to set all that up. So feel free to jump over to PeakNet Live and do a search for that as well. And then obviously those articles go into a lot more depth about what I'm doing here to set up OCSP. But here I'm just whizzing through it very quickly. And then now that I've got the correct permissions on the certificate, I should be able to set up OCSP. I'm going to give the config a name, 2019 CA, seems sensible. Click Browse. Notice to, it's still called 2008 CA because the CA name has not changed, just the server has. And there's my template. Next. Finish. And after a few seconds, hopefully it'll go green. Yes, that's that up working. And the very last thing to do is remember my CRL also has a URL, so if I jump across to my DNS server, which is also my Active Directory server, you will see that the entry for CRL is still pointing to the old 2008 CA, not the new 2019 one. So all I need to simply do is change that to the IP address of the new server. Click Apply, click OK, and I'm going to clear the cache on the DNS server by simply restarting the service. If you have anything external to do, you shouldn't have to do anything of this. Go 
you might need to change a nap rule on the firewall, but other than that, that's us done. Thanks very much for watching.